Okay, thanks for the update, sweetie. EBS presents this program in color. Hold it! Hold it! I think you're going to like this picture. Ready? Go. I drove a thousand miles and my guy didn't play. Ozzy is P.O.'d again? And the, the home crowd seemed to pump up the Canucks. That'll change in game four, I hope. How you doing, everybody? Murph with you from now until 2 o'clock. Lots to cover. Lots to do. We will talk about, I drove a million miles and my guy didn't play at Wrigley Field. I paid a lot of money for the ticket. As again, says, you know what? These guys, someone's taking their job for granted. Who might that be? And uh, very, very disappointing Blackhawks game. But I have them coming back tomorrow in game, I say, tomorrow in game four and evening it up two and two. It's Murph. Welcome aboard. Driven to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. All right, let's do this. And I want to embrace all sports fans right now. You don't have to be a Bulls fan or a Blackhawks fan necessarily, or a Bears fan or a Sox fan or a Cubs fan. But I want to ask you the bigger question right now. And let's look at specifically what occurred yesterday in the Cubs game with the starting lineup. Now, this could be something as he did or could be something, uh, you know, at a, at a hockey game, a basketball game, a football game. Uh, attention. Attention, please. Lineups are in. Your pencil Pencils. Scorecards ready. Scorecards ready. And I give you the correct, correct lineup for today's ball game. All right, now, lots going on with what occurred yesterday at Wrigley Field. Basically, the lineup was what we used to call the second string, the JVs, the Scrubinis. Call them whatever. What did you used to call them? The second string, bench warmer, Scrubs, right? Call them what you wish. I can hear Sergeant, the Chicago Scrubs. <laughs> That's a good one, Murph. Now, so yesterday's lineup, admittedly, second string. Now, there's a million reasons why that occurred, but you don't have to buy into it as a Cubs fan or a sports fan in general. Let me throw this out to you right now. Let's look at baseball. Sox fans, Cub fans. Hello, Milwaukee Brewers fans. Let me ask you. Baseball. Is it competition or entertainment? Oh, Murph, come on now. What, what kind of topic is that? Hold on, Sparky. Don't jump away so quickly. Six four four six seven six seven. I want to ask you first and foremost, baseball, Major League Baseball, professional MLB, is it a competitive sport or a vehicle of entertainment? Now, it depends whose ox is being gored. It depends who's looking in at this, right? You, a fan, you're going to say, well, Murph, it's, it's great competition. It's baseball. Or maybe 161 games a year, you go, Murph, it's competition, but not on the day that I paid for the ticket. On that day, I go to one game a year. Entertain me. So maybe the same person, you, would have two answers. Well, baseball is a competitive sport at the highest uh, level, uh, Murph, at U.S. Cellular and at Wrigley Field. It's the highest level of competition, 161 games a year except the day that I go. <laughs> then I want to be entertained because it's all about me, and I paid for the ticket. Now, let's say you're the manager. Let's say you're Ozzy, Oswaldo. Let's say you're Lou Pinella, Lewis. Do you ever think it's, oh, just entertainment? Maybe you have to a little bit, right? You're making a lot of money. Someone's bringing that dough in. Advertisers, sponsors, fans. But I would think that most managers would say, are you kidding me? It's life or death every game. Competition. We want to win the division and the, get in the playoffs and win the uh, pennant for our league and, and get into the World Series and win the World Series. Go ask Jim Hendry or Kenny Williams. Hey, is your business more entertainment or hard competition? To win. <laughs> you have any guess what they're going to say? But let's say you're a sponsor. Let's say you are Mr. Uh, you know, beer man. Let's say you're Mr. Auto Guy. Let's say you're Mr. Airplane Corporation. Let's say you're uh, 
you know, undergarment, under all over all that guy. You might say, well, you know what? It's entertainment. We got a lot of eyeballs watching, a lot of ears listening, a lot of fannies in the seats looking at our uh, billboards. Of course, it's entertainment. We want a lot of fans out there. So I want to ask you this. When you go to a game, what does that ticket guarantee you? Does it guarantee you entertainment? Does it guarantee you competition? And if you went to that Cubs game yesterday, how would you react when you saw that my guys aren't playing? Where's Milton? Where's the Ram? Fukudome, Terry Osoto, they're all on the bench. Are you kidding me? And the number five starter, Sean Marshall, is pitching? Here's what got me going. We had a few calls yesterday because as I was on the air, the lineups were coming through. I heard some great fans phoning in to Mully and Hanley this morning. Now, I'd like an eavesdrop first on caller Rudy. And Rudy is PO'd because he drove a long way and he paid for the tickets. And he got second string bench warming JV squad scrubinis. Uh, Rudy uh, is on with Mully and Hanley. Hey, Rudy. Hey, Mike, I feel that we got screwed yesterday. Four of us came up from Wisconsin. We've been saving money, planning on this big day to see our, our favorite players, and what we saw was absolute garbage. I think Pinello owes me four tickets. I don't know what's the matter with guy. He just gave up before the game even started. Now it's garbage. It's garbage! Hey, thanks for the sound drop there, Brendan. Well, you... you you're too young to remember this movie. Remember the ad couple? Now it's garbage. All right. So you heard what now? Caller Rudy makes an interesting point. He drove from Wisconsin. He paid a lot of money for the tickets, and he got to Wrigley Field. And you know what? It wasn't what he expected. What do you expect with the price of your ticket? What does the price of your Now, you ever been to a spring training game? You better know going in that you're going to see maybe three innings of half, four guys out there that you know their names. You better know that going in. That is standard operating procedure in spring training. But what Lou Pinella did yesterday confused many of you, and it upset many of you. Now, I could sit here and give you all the reasons Lou did what he did. You're not going to like him. Day game after a night game. Rest a few of the veterans. 15th game in a row in a 20 straight game run in the schedule, their longest of the season. 15th game in a row. Uh, getaway day. Oh, but Murph, they fly luxurious uh, flights. They have the bus pick them up. They stay at the finest hotel. Screw these guys. I paid money. I want to see the regular lineup out there. Mm -hmm. Terrio and Soriano, by the way, had not missed a game all year. It was a Game against a non-division opponent. They're heading on the road to Houston, and I know Houston can't play dead right now. And they're playing then three in Milwaukee. So my bigger question to you, the, the sports expert, along with does the ticket ensure you that you will be entertained? See, it's all about you. God love our caller there, Rudy. But Rudy was all about Rudy. It had nothing to do with 162 games. I don't want to use the old expression, though I will. Got to sometimes lose that little battle, but you want to win the big war, right? No, 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 no. Rudy says, when I go to the game, I'm the only one that counts. Uh, Rudy uh, is on with Molly and Hanley. Hey, Rudy. Hey, Mike. I feel that we got screwed yesterday. Four of us came up from Wisconsin. We've been saving money, planning on this big day to see our, our favorite players and what we saw was absolute garbage. I think Pinello owes me four tickets. I don't know what's the matter with that. He just gave up before the game even started. Pinello owes me four tickets. It was garbage. Now it's garbage. Now let me ask you this. Rudy, and I love Rudy, whoever he is. Rudy, God love you if you're listening up there in Wisconsin. I hope you call the score all the time because you are not really maybe out of step. You are maybe in step, Rudy. But Rudy sounds as if he would be happy if his favorite team, the Cubs, lost 161 games as long as they won the game that he went to because they saved their money all winter. They saved their money all winter to buy a ticket. Now, Walter, Wally, called up just a few minutes later on Molly and Hanley this morning. And Wally, I think he's upset also, right? Wally's in his, on his truck. Hey, Wally. Hey, how's it going? Good. 
I kind of want to repeat what the last gentleman said. I think there were about 40,000 people in that stadium expecting to see generally a regular Cubs lineup. Now, what did we get? Uh, we got a couple of new ball players, which I like that young kid at second base. Um, and, and a bunch of guys that just you got you know, Joey Gathright, Aaron Miles. You got all the backups, is yes, what you got. Right, you got a lot of backups. And Dee Lee, and, and D. Lee was the only guy in there. It, it kind of gives a message to the team too. I mean, the, the team's on a roll. The team feels good about itself. The team's getting closer to first place. Mm. Oh, here's this roadblock that uh, King Lou throws up. Lou. You know, to look at it from the player's point of view sometimes. Oh, you know, they have to know that the person in charge of this asylum, you know, has, uh, you know, some common sense. And I knew when I seen that lineup that Lou was out the night before. Ah, he knew when he seen the lineup that Lou was out the night before, to be or not to be. That was Wally. Now, Wally's very upset. He expects to see the regulars. Do you expect to see the regulars when you buy a ticket? Number two, he says the team is on a roll. They had won four in a row. They lost yesterday. Marshall pitched his ass off. Couple, a bunt hit, a bleeder, and a blast, and you're down 3-0, and then he pitches step for step with Lindsay. But you lose. That's true. Now, let me ask you this. The team is on a roll. As we take a break when we come back, I want to ask you this. Oh, by the way, Vuk. Vuk is on your side. My guy, Jeff Vukovic, Murph's Nationwide Insurance Agent of the Year. He's in Park Ridge for all your insurances. You know, he's a family guy, sports-oriented guy, big score head. Everybody knows Vuk. Someday you will also, Jeff Vukovic. Now, Interesting, and when we come back, I want to ask you, Wally just stated the Cubs were on a roll. Why would you do this now, Lou Pinella? So my question to you is, let's say you just lost four in a row. Would that be a better time? You just won four in a row. Is that a bad time? Or do you never rest more than one or two guys at once, even though 15 games out of 20 in a row going on a uh, getaway day, knowing that you've got some division opponents coming up, Get back to the phones right after a quick break. It's Murphy Palooza, Sports Radio 670. It's the score, and I'm driven to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. I drove a thousand miles, and I had to pay ten dollars for my ticket on a bronze day. I drove a million miles, and I had to pay eleven bucks for the ticket. I am, and I saw garbage out there, Murph. Now it's garbage. Lou Pinella gives the regulars a day off. Fans drive from the North Pole, and they saved all winter to buy that $10 ticket. By the way, why did I say the bronze ticket a moment ago? Here's why. Interesting, and I don't think Lou looks into this. In fact, I'm sure he doesn't. The Cubs, as most teams, have three or four different levels of pricing, depending on the... uh, the game for many reasons. Uh, summertime, weekends, White Sox, uh, Cubs, uh, Cardinals, big games around Chicago. Those will be the highest priced. The Cubs, for instance, have four levels. I believe the Sox have three, but irrelevant to the story that platinum, gold, silver, and bronze are the Cubs' four levels. Now, they have 14 games, platinum, and those are the highest ticket. Then they lower the ticket prices for 34 games called the gold game, golden games, not the golden girls. Then they have 28 games at what they call the silver level, which is third from the top pricing. And they have five games, which are bronze and the most affordable, cheapest. Those games are, and you can probably figure in the top of your head, April into early May, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday day games. You did that on your own. Very good. Other than an opening day if it fell there. Reason being, it's cold, it's rainy, the kids are in school, it's a day game, and to sell the ducats, the tickets, they're going to lower the price. Well, guess what, everybody? Coincidentally, as it might or might not have been, yesterday, Cinco de Mayo, May 5, Tuesday, day game, Giants, it was the cheapest ticket level of the the five games they had. Now, listen to this. 
Let's say you had the cheapest ticket at Wrigley Field yesterday, and this would be Rudy, who drove all the way from Wisconsin and saved and saved and saved to scratch together the dough for the ticket yesterday. And he's P.O. Deluxe because my guys weren't out in the lineup. All right? Picture the last seat in the upper deck at Wrigley Field down by the foul pole. In other words, the worst seat in the house. The highest up and all the way in the corner. By the way, that's always an indicator if any park is sold out. You just look when you walk in, in that third inning, I wonder if they sold out. Look at the last row by the foul poles. And if there's someone sitting there, that's the last and worst ticket. You know how much that ticket costs platinum? Cubs Sox games? Well, that worst seat would be, they call it upper deck reserved outfield, 25 hammers for one ticket. That ain't bad, but it's a lot of money. Next, the gold level, $20. Then the silver level, 16 bucks. Guess how much you could have purchased a ticket for over the counter right at the ticket window at Wrigley Field yesterday, a bronze game, last row, by the foul pole. Any guesses? Nine bucks. Nine bucks. Rudy drove all the way from Wisconsin, and, and, and he could have got in there for nine stinking bucks to see a major league ball game with the Cy Young winner, Lincecum. Uh, Rudy uh, is on with Molly and Hanley. Hey, Rudy. Hey, Mike. I feel that we got screwed yesterday. Four of us came up from Wisconsin. Aww. We've been saving money, planning on this big game this year. Our favorite players, Aww. and what we saw was absolute garbage. Now it's garbage. Now it's garbage. Now it's garbage, Wally. Rudy. Now it's garbage. <laughs> Let's get to the phones. By the way, you know what uh, Joe Torre did recently in this vein? What he did was he gave his three outfielders a day off. Last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What he did was he took his fourth outfielder, Juan Pierre, sort of interesting, and started Pierre, who never starts, because, you know, the Dodgers have Manny Ramirez in left. They've got uh, Matty Kemp, Matt Kemp in center, and uh, Andre Ethier in right. Probably the best outfield in baseball. He gave Pierre a start Friday in center. I'm sorry. He gave Pierre a start Friday and right, Ether the day off. He started Pierre the second day in a row Saturday in center, gave Kemp the day off, and he started Juan Pierre Sunday and gave Manny Ramirez the day off. Even though they sell special Manny land, like Holly, Hollywood, Manny Wood tickets. Manny Wood tickets there right behind Manny. And he didn't play that day. Oh, I bet those Dodger fans that drove from Wisconsin were P.O. Deluxe. Let's go to uh, car phone Tony. Everyone on hold. I'm getting right to the phones now. Let's go. Hey, Tony. Murph, how are you, man? I'm fine. Tony, first of all, is it uh, is baseball competition or is it entertainment at the big league level, in your opinion? Well, I'm going to tell you something, Murph. I am a baseball purist, as I know you are. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Baseball is a multitude of competitions within one game. All right. It's just people don't appreciate what the game was built on and how the game is actually supposed to be played. Tony, let me jump in with you. Unfortunately, and that's the wrong word, we have to be aware, you and I, <clears throat> that not all fans are purists, and some fans do only go to one game a year for the entertainment value. doesn't mean that you and I are right or wrong, well, and it doesn't mean they're right or wrong, but, but go ahead, please. There's two situations that I understand, okay? But here's the scenarios, Murph. Yes. Let's say mm-hmm. they're supposed to play uh, thurs, uh, Friday through Sunday, a usual three-game set. Right. But Friday's game gets sprained out. So what do they do? Mm-hmm. They have a twenty-night doubleheader the next day. The people who had tickets for the day game <clears throat> on Friday are going to go see the team play. But what about the people that paid full price for the ticket on Saturday? Well, they don't do that anymore, back. though. As a, you understand, as a purist, now what they do is they, uh, they split them as a day-night doubleheader. Oh, I understand that. But here's my point, Murph. Let's say the Friday game mm-hmm. played early on Saturday, correct? Okay, now so you're are paying okay. their hard-earned money I for the you. night game. Yeah. And now they don't want Brzezinski playing two games behind the plate. Right, they and, so, and uh, Jermaine Dye may a DH not exactly. play right. Okay, so what you're saying That's is you're ga- when you buy a ticket, you're not guaranteed of any set lineup. No. And the bottom line right. is people need to appreciate the game for what it is. Any player on any given mm-hmm. day can change the course of a game mm-hmm. if he's given the right opportunity. But you see, and you know, but you know that. Baseball. See, but you know that, Tony, and I know that. Yes, I understand it. There's but the guy that the guy that brings his family in for one game a mm-hmm. year, he couldn't give a rat's Rudy Tooty about that. He wants. See, no, it's all about that. him. It's all. I, I want to be entertained. There is one situation where people would have a legitimate gripe, and I'll bring a point up. 
Last year or a couple years ago, the White Sox had taken the first two games in New York. They have a chance to sweep them on Sunday morning. What do they do? They don't start Mark Burley. They end up scratching him and putting Clayton Richard on the mound. I'm sure you remember the game I'm talking mm-hmm. about. All right. That is an acceptable situation where a fan has a legitimate gripe, especially when the team is on a roll. Well, let me you ask you this. Let me jump in for time, starters. Tony. Let me jump okay. in for time. Rich Harden has will be starting his sixth game uh, for the Cubs in six starts uh, tonight. They said they were going to start him 24, 25 times this year. They have not rested him yet. When are they going to rest him? And what if you bought a ticket and you went to see and there's Randy Wells, which you would see anyway because he's filling in for Zambrano. Tony, I'm up against the clock. I'm going to have to let you go phone again. All right, buddy? I will. I appreciate it very much. It's Murph. And was it garbage out there yesterday? Now it's garbage. Sports Radio 670 is the score. Hey, 1 o'clock. We're going to get onto the field. X's and O's. Cubs, Sox, and Blackhawks. Stick around now. Going to find out from you next. Baseball, do they owe you a starting lineup that you like to see when you buy a ticket? Because it's all about you. Or is it all about winning? Hey, hey, real quick, Zach, before you run away here. uh, We had a uh, caller from the Mully and Hanley show, Rudy, who drove, you know, a million miles and spent $10,000, and he, he was P.O.'d because it was a bunch of garbage out there yesterday. Oh, my giddy aunt. So I've been playing it. Is Molly still here? So I've been playing this soundbite for my giddy aunt. Oh, it's garbage. I read a few emails. Murph, what, what <laughs> movie is that from? I got a few emails here. Now, you're a younger guy, but you're well-versed, and I, I'll bet you remember a movie, The Odd Couple, with yeah. Walter Matthau and uh, Jack Lemmon. Right? Yes. So you've been around yes. the block. Oscar and Felix. Oscar and Felix. Felix Unger, old F.U. in the movie. And, right. and they he, let that through the censorship. He was then. the, the right? neat guy. He was like you, the yes. neat guy. The fastidious uh, neat uh, Me? Well, you should see at home. Dana would disagree with you. <laughs> but, yeah, you're right. One was a slob, and the other was the neat freak. Uh, uh, the wife had left uh, Jack Lemon. He needed. He had no money. Felix was the sports writer covering, like, the Mets right. for the, uh, one of the newspapers. He always wore that Met hat. Yeah, and he was nice enough to let... Uh, Jack Lemon, you know, stay at his apartment, and they were, you know, night and day, Mutt and Jeff, you know. And one guy loved it clean, the other guy loved it messy. I, I have this, the whole sound, you got another 10, 15 seconds? I'm here, it's your show. Right. Here is where the uh, sound bite that we've been playing. Now it's garbage. Comes from, <laughs> they're having dinner, and well, let's listen. Here's a key to the back door. Now, you stick to the hallway in your room, and you won't get hurt. Uh, you mean you what? Meaning that if you want to live here, I don't want to see you, I don't want to hear you, I don't want to smell you cooking, all right? Now, kindly remove that spaghetti from my poker table. (laughs) The hell is so funny? It's not spaghetti, it's linguine. (laughs) Now he picks the plate up and walks into the kitchen with the linguine. Throws it against the wall. (laughs) Now... It's garbage. Now it's garbage. <laughs> Putting all the pieces together. Uh, Good stuff, Murph. That's what the Cubs said out there yesterday. According to caller Rudy, let's thank you, Zach Zabin. Twice an hour? Wish it were more. Let's go to uh, Dan is on the north side of Chicago. Hello, Dan. Murph, as usual, I thoroughly enjoy your show. Uh, thank you very much. But what do you oh. think about what Lou did? Well, you know what, he actually alluded to the night before that he said he was going to arrest a bunch of people, but uh-huh. my contention is you can't arrest six guys against a Cy Young guy. Mm-hmm. If people say he wasn't giving up on that game, no, he, he did give up on that game. You can't arrest six guys. You want to arrest two or three? I'll even have no problem with two or three, but six? All right. Now, I'm not going to disagree with it because that's what's beautiful about baseball talk, but I will counter your point with this. If indeed he rested two or three guys like you propose, fine. Then against Houston or against Milwaukee, the next five on the road, he would probably have to rest those other two or three guys. Would you prefer him to have done that? They were playing. Well, no. I mean, Jesus Christ, this is the beginning of the year. There's how many times. Look at, look at Brandon. All right, so the bigger. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So the bigger. Hold on. So the bigger picture is you don't want these guys being rested this early in the season at all. No. Absolutely. Oh, all right. All right you're, you're breaking in and out, unfortunately. I know you held a long time. Thank you, Dan. Dan doesn't want him rested at all. All right. Okay. See if that's your opinion. That's great. Problem is, you'll probably have guys by about the middle of August dead. Dead. 
How about you go to one game a year? I tell you, there's someone out there. Maybe it's you. 161 games, you want to make sure they win as many as they can so that they can, your team, Cubs, Sox, so they can advance into the playoffs healthy, fresh, unlike last year maybe, Pro- progress on. But that one game you go to, oh, Murph, they better put the they better put the regulars out there when I go to the game. And, hey, that's your prerogative to think that way. Costs a lot of money, 9 bucks or 25 bucks to sit in that last row. Next, uh, Marv is a car phone. Hello, Marv. Good afternoon, Mr. Murphy. How you doing? Good. Marv, which way do you come in on this? See, i got to lean more towards the entertainment factor, but... Let me say, uh, start off by saying that I was at the game yesterday, but I'm not going to let that influence our, our conversation. All right. Now, my, my, my version of entertainment isn't like WWE entertainment where I'm expecting <laughs> a show or something like that. Right, nothing my that's version... not really fixed or, or set like High Lie down in Florida where it's pre-orchestrated and fixed. Right. My version of entertainment is watching a competitive ball game. All right. Now, in order to do that, we need players on the field that are actually going to be competitive. Or, mm-hmm. you know, well, I'll admit for half the game it was quite competitive and it was an interesting ball game. Now, hold that thought. Hold that thought, Marv. Don't go away. The first inning is what goofed this up for Lou, and here's why. You were there. Marshall's on the hill to start the game. The first batter, Lewis, he sawed him off on a uh, ground ball 4-3, broke his bat on the handle. The next batter, and I'm not pot crying or poor mouth and her whining, please. No one to take. The next batter, Renteria, laid, da- laid down a beautiful bunt. You couldn't have rolled it out with your hand better, right? Right. Next hitter, Aurelia, hit a five hopper just to the left of uh, Fontenot's glove at third. Clean base hit. But the first three hitters, no one laid the lumber to the ball. Next guy hits a clean three run homer, and now you're down by three. Marshall then goes step for step with Lincecum. Cubs get two. They're only trailing three to two going into the uh, Samarja appearance. So Lou's whole idea wasn't all that half baked until Samarja screwed the pooch. Right. He had plenty of lefties in there to counteract the right handed pitcher. All right. But what I'm saying is, yeah. like, in that sense, I expect to be entertained with competition, and I do want to see mm-hmm. the players on the field that are going to be competitive and win the ball game for us. Did you realize when you bought the ticket, and I'm sure you could you know, opt to go to a lot of games, did you intentionally go because it was the bronze, one of the five cheapest games, or it was just a good day on the calendar for you to go, I'll bet? No, it was uh, my birthday, actually, All right. so I went on my birthday. Hey, Cinco de Mayo, happy birthday. I was a few yeah. days uh, just before you. So, Marv... It wasn't the price of the ticket. It's just the overall uh, uh, philosophy in your mind. It, uh, you you want to see the good product uh, as good as possible, and you didn't think that was it yesterday. Right. That's the right. point of the game is right. to you know win the game. No. The point is to win the 162-game war, or is it to win that particular battle? See, that's the question that you raise, Marv. Right. They lose by, you know, they lose uh, division by one game. They uh-huh. Point to that one game where they sat six right. players. Or they don't rest anybody and they lose by uh, one game because somebody was tired. <laughs> we, right. We, that's the dilemma the manager had. Marv, good to hear from you. Happy birthday, uh, buddy. Thank you, buddy. All right. Appreciate it very much. Who's been holding the longest here? We got uh, Schaumburg John next. Okay, fellas, thanks. Cross the glass here. Hello, John. Hey, Marv, how you doing? Good, man. Jump in. Hey, I, uh... I think, uh, you know, if, even if you're spending 50 cents on a game, mm-hmm. you should at least be able to see some of your marquee players. Why? I mean, uh, now, okay, good point. I'm not arguing with you, but why? Well, I mean, that's what you, I mean, they build these stars up so you can uh, uh-huh. you come and fill the seat so you can see these guys play. Well, no, no doubt. There's no yeah. doubt. It's kind of like where when you go into the movies and you get there before the uh, the first show, the uh-huh. discount ticket. You go in to see Star Wars and they're showing you more <laughs> for more. How about this? I've never been in New York to a Broadway. Never been in a locker room. I've never been to a Broadway play, but I guess occasionally you walk in or maybe down here at Chicago Theater or Cadillac Theater, or whatever, and there'll be a little note: the understudy is filling in tonight in the role of the star. Now, what do you do there? Or how about you know what? Once well, I yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, in that case, I hope uh, Scottish Miss Club management is listening. I mean, they can get the uh, the ball girl to do a, you know, a, a foul pole dance or something. Hey, you know what? This foul pole, sponsored by, I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Just gave him an idea. This foul pole dance, sponsored by, 
All right, everyone on hold, get right back to you. Sports Radio 670. It's more of eight. One o'clock, we will shift gears, but we'll have a few more calls on this topic. Baseball is a, com- is a competition. Is it entertainment? When you buy a ticket, hey, man, I deserve to see the best because it's the day that I'm going. Sports Radio 670. Hey, the thetowngroup.com, my guys, you know, the white trucks, the red stripes, West Town, North Town, Southwest Town, Northwest Town, they do it right at the thetowngroup.com, the big Chiller piping, HVAC mechanical jobs, repairs, replace, problem solving, yearless uh, service programs by the year, saves you money, the free estimates. You know, everybody does it right at thetowngroup.com. Big jobs. Hey, here's Bruce Miles in the Daily Herald today. Uh, to paraphrase, uh, it says here the uh, dilemma of a baseball manager is to win the battle or win the war. Exactly what we've been talking about. Maybe Lou, well, he did. Lou Pinella lost the battle yesterday, but the war would be to advance, be ready and fresh, win the division, any team, win the division and be fresh and ready to go, if possible, in the playoffs. And when you buy a ticket, does it entitle you? Do you have a sense of entitlement? That it better be the starting eight out there, the regulars, because, damn it, I'm going to the game and I'm more important. A caller, and we'll get right to the phones. Tinley Park, Naperville, Lafayette, Indiana, Murph Till 2, driven you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. Quick sound bite from Mully and Hanley. Had a third caller today. We've already been listening to Rudy and Wally. And uh, here is soccer fan Gary. Gary, you're on with Mully and Hanley. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you doing? Good. What's up? Was uh, was I didn't see the uh, the Cubs game yesterday. Uh, I understand where the guys are coming from with the ticket prices. Because uh, I went to see United, Manchester United, when they came here. Yeah, they a bunch of us went there, yeah. and they send out, like, a bunch of scrubs, and you're going, hang on a second, it's like, cost us this much money to get in here. Now, in United's defense, if you do go and see them play when they play at home or when they play in a game that matters, like yesterday's baseball game does, they will field a strong team. So I kind of side with the fans, the Cubs fans, who were saying it's completely wrong. And, and you know what, they should get some money back because... The Cubs are very good at charging for premium games and regular games, and it seems there is no regular game with the Cubs. If you look at it on their schedule, no. there's premium games, and uh-huh. they charge accordingly. Now, there's a frequent caller. love hearing Gary with that lovely Irish accent, and but Gary's incorrect in one regard. That was the cheapest uh, game on the ticket uh, yesterday. Platinum games, there's 14, there's 34 gold, 28 silver. That You could have got a $9 ticket, but his interesting angle was, I thought, in soccer, that when you got a home game, you always play the regulars. Maybe that Lewis should have done all this in Houston, and there wouldn't have been any you-know-what hitting the fan. Let's go to Rodney in Lafayette, Indiana. Hey, Rodney. Hey, Murph. Always a pleasure. Thank you. What do you have for me? Uh, my contention is that Lou was trying to win the battle and the war ah. with, the, with his lineup yesterday. And mm-hmm. what I mean is he was able to rest some frontline starters while also providing – Depending on whether or not you're counting Marshall's bat, he threw seven left-handed hitters. Actually, eight. Eight. Okay, eight left-handed hitters Uh at arguably the toughest Mm -hmm. right-handed pitcher in the National League. Hold that thought. You're exactly right. He started left-handed hitters or switch hitters other than Derek Lee. They all batted lefty or switched over lefty. And he figured maybe contact, make some uh, hit the ball, got more speed in here than normal. So he wasn't waving the old uh, white flag in your opinion, and I agree with you, Rodney. Yes, sir. Thank you. Phone again. Appreciate Lafayette, Indiana. Now, Naperville. Hey, Mike. Murph, how you been? Good, Michael. Hey, listen, um, I know you have to win the war, but if you are going to look at any professional team, if you're going to take out more than 50% of their starters, their normal people, it's hard enough to come up with one or two people, as I see on the south side every day. But when you have to take out more than half your starters, you realistically are really not saying you're aggressively trying to win a game. Now, Mike, what about – and I'm not going to disagree with you, but what if – Lou Pinella said, all right, I'm not resting any of my starters now for the next five games. Then I have an off day Monday. And let's just say, what if, you know, what if they win the next five? Would you then call back and go, you know what? He won five out of six. He lost that one battle, but he won the the next five. Would you then call me back on Monday? I don't think it's going to happen. It's hard to win five in a row. But would you agree then? Well, 
And the answer might be yes. And, again, I know we kind of go back and forth there. Look at last year with the Sox. They tied with Minnesota. They needed an extra uh-huh. game. Yep. If, if Ozzie would have rested six of his players mm-hmm. and technically threw a game away. But, they again, would not, to, to would jump have, in for time only, not to be right. uh, mean-spirited to interrupt you, because, Mike, but what about this? He would have then maybe had to get Soriano a day off in Houston and then Terrio mm-hmm. a day off the next day in Houston. And then what if you lose both those games? You go, Why'd you give those guys a day? Sometimes you can't win, can't lose, but that's why we love talking about it. Mike, phone again, buddy. Appreciate it. And my final caller, Tenley Park. Mike has been patient. Hello, Michael. Hey, man. Great show. Hey, Thanks. you know what? One of my friends used to pitch with the Cubs. Very good guy. Uh-huh. He was a veteran player. Right. Him and I used to talk about why aren't these players playing and why aren't these pitchers pitching more yeah. innings. Yeah. His comment was, hey, in their contract, they got some of these pitchers in their contract that they can't pitch more than so many innings. And also, some of these players can't play more. Well, I've so never, you know to, be on, to be honest business. with you, not to discredit your friend, this is something I've never heard. Uh, I'm not going to rule it out of hand and reject it. I know that there's uh, clauses which if I achieve this or that, I get extra. I've never heard, right. unless maybe there's one prima donna out there whose agent was, a, you know, maybe a Barry Bonds that says, you know, I get every third Sunday off. I'm not playing those games. But I, yep. it's news to me, Mike. But it's a business, and yes. I was in I was in the business that you were doing. But the thing is, the other thing you got to look at, if I go to the uh, emergency room, I don't want a paramedic or some student doctor working on me. I want the real thing. And <laughs> hey, thing, it's, you know, not only is it not brain it's surgery, it's not even rocket science. Michael, I appreciate it very much. Hey, don't go to the emergency room on the weekend. No, no, no. I, 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 don't even know. I never heard that. Sports Radio 670, the score. Back in a flash, second hour, we'll get back on the field of play. Hawks, Cubs, Sox, lots of talk. Hey, they, what, we lose three yesterday? Triple header loss for our teams. Go You've ahead. been around the uh, NFL for a long time, Zach. The yes. biggest rivalry in sports under the radar right now, hatred towards each other, I guess, is the fan. Fan hatred towards each other. The Bears and the Packers, I think you can stick that in your back pocket from what I hear, compared to the Packers and the Vikings. Have you ever heard that that is, like, by far the the biggest border war battle there is going on these days? Yeah, for a while it was uh, Patriots-Jets because right. of the whole Belichick thing. Okay, yeah. And Mangini. But, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. but yeah, with him leaving now, you, you yeah. got Vikings-Packers. I hear that's like, brutal up yeah, there. Yeah. Back and forth, right? Yep. Uh, unbelievable. Great job. Thanks, Zach. You got it. By the way. Yes, sir. You can listen to us. Uh-huh. Dot com at what? All the time. The score dot- yes, I, I do it every uh, day from noon to two. Yeah, uh, there yes. you go. <laughs> I'm compelled to, by contract, to listen to my own show. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it. And all uh, up and down throughout the day. This hour brought to you by Menards. All right, let's do this. Let's get back on the field of play. I was at the Hawks game last night. Then I got home, watched the White Sox game on, uh, on uh, DVR. Watch the Cub game on my way home. Got home about 2.30, watched the whole game. So, triple loss yesterday. Number one, if you want to beat the crowd, 6-4-4-6-7-6-7. Anything about the Blackhawk game, I'll, I'll give you some direction if you need it, but maybe you don't. Anything you want to talk about quick, the Blackhawk game last night, what you liked, what you didn't like. The Cubs game and the Sox game beat the crowd at 6 4 4 6 7 6 7 Now, fun night at the uh, Hawks game last night. I was out there. Fun until, of course... Well, you know, after the uh, national anthem, the puck dropping about five minutes in, and it was a flat pancake. Uh, had a great time out there, but you know what? It's just not the same when you lose the crowd. So I want to ask Blackhawks fans that were there or watched the game on TV last night, keys to getting back in this, keys to winning game four, what went wrong in game three. By the way, I saw happy birthday Murph up on the uh, scoreboard there. Maybe Jay Blunk. Jay, did you slip that in there? It was three or four days ago. Thank you very much. Oh, it was another Murph. And we all love our birthdays. I think Jay Blunk had his also. Happy birthday, Jay Blunk. Now, Hawks fans, I'm not a, a hockey expert, but I watch. Been watching since Holland Makita, so osmosis, I hope, has given me a little bit. But I want to hear from Hawks fans. Keep half the lines open for the Blackhawks. Six four four six seven six seven. Coach Q last night didn't like the play of some of his stars. Gave less ice time out there to Jonathan Taves. That was a key number two. You know, I'll use the word rhythm. There was no rhythm. Vancouver was cutting off the passing lanes. They were, the Hawks weren't able to, you know, have nice uh, 
cross ice, uh, up the ice, uh, two line, one line passes. How do you combat that? If you're a hockey guy, a hockey expert, what do the Hawks have to do differently on that? And two power plays for the Blackhawks, if I'm not mistaken, zero or maybe one shot on goal in the the two power plays uh, that I remember. Nothing. How do you get more? Is it is it that simple? To not get a couple shots on goal in a five-on-four for two stinking minutes? Hockey fans, help me round out our keys to the Hawks coming back in game four, 644-6767, and we'll leave some uh, lines open for Cubs and Sox fans. I, I want to throw a topic out, which may be a little, a little confusing at first, which I do very well, and that would be, you can mull this over for a moment if you wish. Is it possible that it's still early for one team in town, the Cubs, but it's not quite so early, or it's not even early at all anymore, for the White Sox? Now, the reason I bring this up, Joe Cowley was on the score this morning with Mully and Hanley. And Joe Cowley does a great job, covers the White Sox. It's about a one-minute long cut. Normally, we would play a shorter bite, but I think you can handle this. Long attention span theater. Let me ask you this. At the very end, Joe Colley's going to basically say, hey, man, it ain't early anymore. I want to ask Sox fans, do you agree? Is it still early? It's May 6th. Is it still early? And Cub fans, same question. And I wonder if you can follow through on this with me. Is it possible in baseball that on the day May 6th, it's still early for some teams, but it's not still early on the very same day of the calendar for other teams. Six four four six seven six seven. That's Molly. It's Hanley at Chicago Sports Radio six seven to the score. And let's get out to the OnStar Hotline and welcome in our guy. He's Mr. Joe Colley, the Chicago Sun Times. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was crap. I mean, that's the best way to sum it up. I mean, the, the you know the whole road trip was bad, but yesterday really, you know, kind of just personified just how flawed this team is and and. Um, you know, I know people are saying, oh, it's still early May. This thing tastes just like 2007. 2007 tasted bad in May, and this thing is tasting just as bad. And, and um, some major concerns, too. It's not just, oh, uh, this guy's going bad and we can fix him. I mean, I mean, you have a lot of guys that are just major concerns right now. A week ago, Joe, you said there was a blah feeling around this team, and now it's even worse than that. The starting pitching beyond Burley is not uh, – you can't count on anybody – you have uh, injuries. You have still in the center fielder. You have concerns with uh, the bullpen at times. There's nothing to hang your hat on here. This this team, the real. What's the feel? Last week was blah. What's the feeling now? No, I mean it's 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 not good. I mean you know Chris Katz is still hitting out of position. You know he's done a good job and and, and put it in the leadoff spot, but he's not a leadoff hitter. I mean uh, Alexia Ramirez still struggling. Uh, you know it, it's just that, and, and the thing that's kind of disheartening, you know, which I wrote about last week, is this, this team. If if Ozzy's not calling people out. That's it. This team will just move along lifelessly unless the manager is saying something. The rest of the it's just it's just a uh, you know you don't have that one guy that you can go to you know that is at least biting down on, on nails and and, and, is, and at least portraying the 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 idea that he's as upset as the manager. It's just kind of guys just you know saying all the right things. It's, it's a marathon. It's a, you know this thing's long. It's, well, no, this thing can get away from you quickly, and 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 that's what the course they're on right. Now. Oh, now that's interesting. The marathon, the sprint, this thing can get away from you very quick. Now that was Joe Cowley on Mully and Hanley this morning on the score. Chicago Sun Times beat reporter covers the White Sox. You hear what he said right there? <laughs> Paraphrase it out if you wish. It's not early any longer. May sixth. It's not early. Now I will I will step out here on on thin ice, at risk of you thinking that is and it's not a Cub Sox thing. So you know, hold that back. Okay, we can do better. You can do better than that. I believe right now that every team is constructed differently, any sport. And for some teams, here's my bigger question, and if you want to zero in, rifle shot in on Cubs or Sox, or if you want to shotgun uh, broader, I want to ask you this. Can some teams be constructed where, hey, man, it's already late? That would be the White Sox. And you could be constructed like the Cubs, and it would still be early. Or is that is that incorrect? Is that impossible? Murph, it's May 6th. Everybody's on the same pace. Six four four six seven six seven, and I need Blackhawks keys 
to winning game four on Thursday. Glenview Jim is on the score. Hello, Jim. Hey, Murph. How you doing? Good, Jimmy. You want to talk a little hockey, right? Sure. Um, well, you know, just about last night and going forward, um, I hate to say it, but if Patrick Kane doesn't become responsible defensively, they have no chance because he is a liability every single time he's on the ice. Now, let me yeah. ask you this. Has that been the case all year? A- absolutely. But all Then year- how did they get to this? See, and I'm not going to dis- uh, argue with you because, you know, I'm not a hockey expert. But, Jim, I would wonder, can you make a change like that? And I've even said Lou Pinella should have made changes in the playoffs, so I'm not going to, you know, go against myself. But what would uh, Coach Q do to try to change this after things have worked so well? Or is it just the matchup with Vancouver that uh, spotlights Patrick Kane in your eyes? Well, for, first of all, I also want to say he's he's a young kid. So, uh-huh. you know, that 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 being said, Quenville actually has to take part of the blame yesterday. Mm-hmm. It, 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 with one minute to play in the first period, they're down a goal. He sticks Kane on the ice because there's a face-off in the Canucks zone, and Kane's been notorious for hooking guys. So he takes the hooking penalty, and they go into the second period and give up the second goal. The first mm-hmm. goal, he released his man from the point on a slow back check, and that guy scores the goal. He lost two board battles, and after he lost two board battles, Quinville actually sat him basically the rest of the game. Wasn't Taves has also got less ice time, it appeared. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I think... Jonathan Taves, though, is is at least a two-way hockey player right now, and I, there must be something going on with that. But the other key to you mean an in, an injury? You mean? Yeah. I, yeah. I, okay. I, I, I think there's something there. He's, he's I mean, dinged up, he, I'm sure. He's he's the been, shoulder. He's, he denied it. Yeah. Yeah, he's been a mm-hmm. stud all year. Sure. So you you, you got to look at the whole work um, all year. But you know, Marty Hamlet had a great first series against Calgary, but I, he hasn't showed up yet. Well, you know, the one thing, and I was at the game, but I watch with, you know, rookie eyes, even though I've been watching since the 60s. But I thought Havlett, though he, you know, didn't, he still is an amazing guy where he's able to put the puck on someone else's stick when it looks like a blind behind his leg, but he threw his leg behind his back pass. I mean, his Havlett is still a magician out there, but there was nothing for him last night, or did he just have a flat game, you thought? Well, I, I just don't think he usually beats somebody off mm-hmm. of, off of his first or second step, and yeah. he hasn't been able to do that in that in this series. What did ter- so. what did Vancouver do? You know, okay, let's look at the other side of the coin. All your points are excellent keys, Glenview Jim. Was Vancouver maybe? You know, they're a pretty good team. What did they do, perhaps, to counter some of the Blackhawks' strengths? Well, I, I, I can tell you this. They chipped the puck in, got uh-huh. it deep, right. and made sure that the Hawks couldn't hit a stretch pass, which the Hawks hit all night in Vancouver. That's the there. phrase. I was looking for that inside hockey phrase, stretch pass. Absolutely. I was fumbling before. You know, a one-line pass, two-line cross ice. And that's what they were able to shut down, they Vancouver. Shut the, the lanes, if that's the right word, for, for, the, uh, for those passes. Not only did they shut it down, mm-hmm. Murph, if you were at the game, you saw they actually picked a couple off and went in two on one, three on two, yes. and just didn't, didn't convert on those plays. So, how about the two, how about two power plays where I don't think we got a shot on goal, okay. if one maybe? The, the two power plays, it's mm-hmm. interesting because if you look at what the Hawks are doing, they're running two separate sets. They're running a set with Bufflin where he stands in front of the right, goalie and, right. and they try to shoot pucks at the net. And they have Taves' his group out there with Hamlet mm-hmm. and Sharp, and they're trying to hit backdoor plays. Yes. Well, you know what? Go back to what's working. What's working is shooting the puck at the net and going and finding rebounds. That's how Vancouver's scoring, and that's how the Hawks are scoring. They're not. They're they're, they're collapsing down. You're not going to hit a backdoor play on that type of defense. My guy Jim in Glenview. Congratulations! Hang on, Jim. You've just been named the Browns' chicken caller of the show. Hey, Jim. Nicely done. You broke it down. You're gonna go visit my friends at Browns. All right, buddy. Hang on, Jim. It tastes better. Oh, Italian beef right now, an Italian sausage, a combo. That sounds great. Tell you what, it's Murph till 2, and we got phone lines jammed when someone hangs up. We, oh, we got one line open, 6446767. Are the Cubs still early, and are the White Sox, is it getting late? And any more Hawks? Man, I don't know how you can top Glenn View Jim. That was terrific stuff. Hey, big news in from Jack Phelan. Chevrolet, today only from 6 till 8 p.m. tonight. It's premiere night of the 2010 
Chevy Camaro. They have an Inferno Orange and Silver Ice. Connie's Pizza will be there serving for you tonight. Jack Phelan, 6 till 8, right over there, Harlem Avenue and Lions. you got to see Jack.com. Jack Phelan, 6 till 8 tonight on Harlem Avenue, the new Camaro. Wow, Connie's Pizza. A uh, rough game for the White Sox last night, the Cubs during the day yesterday, and the Blackhawks. We lose three, and that doesn't mean they can't uh, all go on nice little, nice winning streaks. It'd be super nice for the, just think of the Blackhawks went on a nice winning streak. <laughs> yes. six four four six seven six seven. it's Murph. We'll get right back to the phones. Asking Blackhawks fans to fill in a few more of the keys to win game four on Thursday. Sox fans, Cubs fans, is it possible that one team, it's already getting late, but for the other team, you know, it's still early. Ozzie Gian, you know, he said after the game, some of these guys have to start uh, not thinking that a job is being handed to them. Right, Ozzie? I've seen some people in this team better check that. Mm-hmm. And some people they think they for sure they're gonna be right. the stars and they're gonna be the the, the, the they, they better check their they better start thinking about the way we play. I'm not talking about everyone. Mm-hmm. I talking about uh, players out there. You know they just they want to take it for granted like they yeah well ah. they better be careful. Now Ozzy says some guys out there taking their job for granted. Who would that be, Sox fans? Well, you got to figure number one. He's talking about. After a bad outing up on the uh, bump, figure, you know, he's probably talking about Gavin Floyd. But what are you going to do there? That job is granted to him. What are you going to do? Send him down? Send him out? Put him in the bullpen? You're already worried about Contreras. And though Cologne has been fine, you always have to worry when the weather heats up if this guy's going to not start giving up some long balls. Maybe not. He's been terrific. He's got that two-seamer just running back, keeping it nice and low right there. He's on the hands, on the right. I mean, he's looking great, Cologne, right now. But what the hell? Gavin Floyd, let's be honest. He, The job has been given to him. The job has been granted to him. He's got to be talking about XRAM, right, Alexi Ramirez? That's the guy he's got to be talking about, trying to light a fire right there. Who else could it be? Now, Nate Silver is going to join us tomorrow from BaseballPerspectives.com. He was the guy that got the Sox management all upset. And a lot of Sox fans, I remember Mully was fit to be tied when Baseball Perspectives' Nate Silver predicted the White Sox to finish fifth. Now, some of the problems that the Sox had then, February, are really unchanged now. No center fielder. Injuries didn't help, but... No second baseman, though, you know, it looks like Getz and Knicks can do it defensively. Don't know what they can hit for you. And no leadoff hitter. The problem is that your leadoff hitter was going to come from center field or second base, and right now you have a lot of mix and match right there. Let's get back to the Oh, by the way, I got an email here. Kenny Owens from LaGrange Park. Murph, did you hear the caller to the Ranger the other day? Now, I didn't say here if it was postgame or Sox pregame or what, but he said the Ranger got a call that said maybe Murph was right back in March when he suggested the best leadoff hitter. Oh, no, I'm not going to read this. Kenny will get pissed. Oz will get pissed. The best leadoff hitter on the White Sox is Carlos Quentin. And that was only by default. I said, you know what? The way this club is constructed, you heard me. I'm not going to repeat the whole thing. But you have thumpers in the 3-4-5 hole as it is. You know, if you're going to have Paulie Kane, you're going to have uh, Jim Tome, you're going to have Jermaine Dye thumping 3-4-5. You have no on-base guy, no leadoff hitter. If Soriano can bat number one, certainly the White Sox should consider, and I'll say it again, Carlos Quentin is your leadoff hitter. They won't do it now, though, because, you know, oh, man, they don't want to do what that guy on the radio said. Let's bring up uh, Al from LaSalle. Hey, so the rhymes. Hello, LaSalle, Al. Hi, Murph. Yes, hello. Hey, uh, I'd like to go with the premise that coming out of spring training, mm-hmm. the Cardinals were, or the Cubs were 10 games better than the Cardinals, according to Vegas. So, well, out. don't go according to Vegas because more Chicagoans vacation in Vegas than St. Louisans, and they drive the uh, the odds. Uh, but anyhow, go ahead. Okay, so say 13. Whatever. Okay. Uh, the Cardinals are three games in front. That brings it back down to 10. Now, how much has the Cubs changed since 
spring training. Uh, I would have to say Soto's a negative. The bullpen is a negative. Uh, let's just stick with them two negatives. So, so pretty much uh, Soto uh, will continue to be in the tank uh, probably for the rest of the year. So you can probably say that Soto will hit 167 uh, on his bubblegum card for 2009. No, but what I oh. would say is he's not an all-star catcher like All he right. was last All year. All right. Okay, we'll meet in the middle on that. Okay. The mm-hmm. bullpen is weaker than what the Cubs expect. Let me ask you this, Al. You're driving up the driveway here. Pull in the garage. What are you actually uh, saying? I'm saying it's a race. The only wild card is the Cubs have more. Al, our, our topic today was is it is it uh, too, is it late now or is it still early for the Cubs and the Sox? And as a Cardinal fan, I embrace your phone call. But I think you've veered uh, off the driveway, and I appreciate it very much. Was that a polite way to say goodbye, uh, Brendan? Okay. They don't give you a microphone when you fill in for Jay? Yeah, I just don't want to step on you everybody, too much. Everybody else does. Jump in. It's a lot of fun, I hear. Rick is in uh, Addison, Illinois. Hello, Rick. Hey, Murph. How you doing, buddy? Oh, no one's stepping on me today. Why don't uh, you feel free to be the first? What do you have for me, Rick? I would never step on you. Well, you asked if it was too early for the White Sox. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. In fact, I think it's a perfect time for this uh, for the upper management to yeah. start evaluating what's going on with this team. And let me explain. Sure. We're watching the same thing that happened last year. Nobody can get the timely hit. How many runners did we leave in scoring position again last night? Now, you won the division last year, just for the record. Well, I understand. Okay, that, all right. But, but, but just for the record, too. Yes. Detroit had subpar year. Mm-hmm. Cleveland had subpar mm-hmm. year. And I think the White Sox rode the coattails of them guys having subpar years. What about Kansas City Royals this year? Is this just a fluke right now that they are uh, a game and a half up and three and a half ahead of the Sox? Well, I don't know. If, if the rest of the team is like Greinke, the uh-huh. rest of the division's in trouble. <laughs> I'm you. Well, I, still, I still think that the year is going to catch up to the Kansas City Royals, but we need some more consistency on that White Sox lineup. What worries right you the most? What worries you the most, Rick? In case Kenny Williams is listening right now, which uh, that would be highly uh, doubtful. Well, two things worry me the most. A is we need consistency with uh, some clutch hits. We need some guys in there that can, can step up to the plate. All right. Now, now that runner. that is something that's a little uncontrollable at this point in time. You got your star veteran players, but what is co- uh, ch- correctable? What is correctable? What what uh, worries you that could be changed still? A leadoff hit or a center field or a second baseman? A four or a five starting pitcher? A first starting pitcher. Jose right. Contreras looks terrible. Thanks a lot. Phone again. Appreciate it, Rick. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you very much. Sports Radio 670. Everybody on hold will get right to you. And when we return, we'll stay on these topics. And I, just, uh, I got a few Hawks fans dropped off that last segment. We're not just talking baseball. Give me a couple Blackhawks keys for game four to turn it around versus Vancouver. And I got a sound bite of a pitcher doing something that most of you say you go to the bathroom when he does it. And he did it yesterday. Sports, the designated hitter. The pitcher shouldn't hit. Murph, I hate when the pitcher hits. I go to the potty. It's the score. Back in a flash, Murph. A palooza driven to you by Chevy Drive, Chicago. Dagger. I go to the bathroom when the pitcher hits, Murph. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Welcome back. Murph on a home stretch. Oh, the Gillette music. Let's crank. I love that song. Hey, Brandon. You know this song is playing? Do you know this song? I have no idea. How old a fell are you? Now you're about uh, 19. You got 25. A... Get out of here. Yes. Really? You've seen my hairline, Murph. Look at me. <laughs> Brandon, by the way, what's your nickname that they've uh, handed you? Uh, uh... Baldy McGrindy. I will never use that. Why not? Hey, do you like? Do you like it? It was. It was you embrace it, it's, it? It's. It was given to me by management, so I have to embrace <laughs> it. The song that was just playing is uh, called the uh, Gillette theme song. You've heard of Gillette razor, right? The Gillette. You Absolutely. are old enough to shave. Barely. Yeah, but yes. you, know, you got a little peach fuzz going there. Can you bring that up again, or is it gone? That song. We're, yeah. We're yeah. Gone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This was the song that was played like all my life when I was a young boy and into my ten. When the boxing boxing would come on the Friday night fights on the old black and white TV, brought to you, crank it up, come on. Brought to you by Gillette. This is the Gillette song. To look sharp and feel sharp with the Gillette blue blade. Ah, oh, you youngsters, thank you very much. What was that Baldy McPherson? What was that? McGrindy. McGrindy. 
Let's go to, uh, okay, enough of the Gillette, lose it. Let's go to uh, Batavia. Nicholas is next. Hello, Nicholas. Hey, Murph, thanks for taking my call. Hey, Nicholas, thanks for jumping in. We got a lot of, hey, do you go to the bathroom when the National League pitcher comes up to hit, uh, maybe you're at the ball game or you're at the home watching on TV? Do you go to the John and say, it's the damn pitcher, I don't want to watch it. Do you do that? No way, because Zambrano may be up. Oh, he might pull a, he might pull a hammy. Or he might hit one out of the park. He might hit one out. But what about, uh, you know, Sean Marshall or something? You, you know, you, that's boring. You hate that pitcher batting. You're a young guy. You love the DH, right? Yeah, you know, I just moved here from Baltimore, and so I am kind of an American League guy. Uh-huh. Uh, so I like the DH. But i got to say, having yeah. moved here from Baltimore, it's yeah. great just to have something to talk about. Uh, Cubs and Sox. Well, well you, moved, really you, moved out of Bal- you moved out of Baltimore just in time because <laughs> – you got stuck with one of the worst executives for oh, fans oh, okay. in the history of baseball. Have you ever heard of a guy named Andy McPhail? No. Well, he's running your Baltimore Orioles now, F-A-I-L. He's a clown. I just know Andy was, uh, just as big a clown, so maybe yeah. take two of them. Well, uh, Angelos, well, they, you know what? They are birds of a feather, and it's good for them yeah. to have flocked together. Nicholas yeah. from Batavia, what do you got for me? Hey, well, uh, I'd like to talk about whether or not it can still be early for some teams yeah. and not early for others. I think to discern that, you need to look at the larger context. Uh-huh. Uh, when it comes to the Cubs, yeah. uh, they look good. But if the Cardinals keep playing the way they are, uh, it's not going to be early much longer for the Cubs. They're going to find themselves pretty far behind. Now, but when it comes to the yes. AL Central, yes. I don't see any team running away with that. So the interesting thing is, you are like a, the counterpoint. My initial thought would yeah, have been with Joe Cowley, uh, who was on. We replayed a few minutes ago. Sometimes Sox beat reporter and uh, does a lot of great work here at the score. He said, "You know what? It's really it's getting late." He said, "You know mm-hmm. what? It's late right now for the Sox." And my thinking was, well, they've got you know their veteran guys, you know, in the, in their late mid late thirties. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, Die, Tomei, Canerco, the. And they got a lot of and the young young guys, you know, from Alexi Ramirez and Josh mm-hmm. Fields. Maybe I'm thinking, you know, it's tougher for that to turn itself around. In other words, maybe mm-hmm. the aging veteran, you know, hey, it just ends quick. You never know when. Uh, and and the young guy, you don't have a track record. Whereas the Cubs, and uh, this is not a Cub Sox thing. It's just factual. Mm-hmm. Many of their players are more in the prime of their career age is not real young and not the sort of uh, aging veteran it would seem that that would be the team that has longer down to the finish line and they'll maybe end up where they usually do on the back of their old baseball card but you've turned it around based on and very knowledgeable on your but based on the competition the right context that's right that's right the cardinals look uh, very very good and if carpenter mm-hmm. comes back yeah look out and uh, the Sox need to get their pitching back like they did last year, I think. Well, you know what? Uh, they have a uh, pro- you know a lot of teams have holes in the four and five starter uh, rotation. Don't get me wrong. The Kansas City Royals uh, were not factored in by many experts to be first place. Many said that they were ready to make a move out of fifth uh-huh. place. Hey, great to have you here from Baltimore, and I'm glad you got yeah. away from Andy the Clown. Yeah. McPhail. F A I L. All right. So you go to the bathroom when the pitcher comes up, right? Mm-hmm. All right, Cubs game yesterday. Cubs are trailing. Let me do this off the top of my head. Three to one, fifth inning. Cy Young pitcher Lincecum on the mound. Cubs have runners, I believe. I mean, the first and second, two out, trailing three to one. Bottom of the fifth, and here comes Sean Marshall. Murph, I love the DH. I hate the National League when the pitcher comes up to bat. I go to the bathroom. And Marshall shoots that ball out in the center. And Scales is going to score. Throw goes to third. Save. It's three to two. And a boy, Sean. And a change up, up and out over the plate. That's the same pitch he swung through to strike out back in the third inning. This time gets just enough of it to dunk it in front of Aaron Rowan in center field. Two outs. Bobby Scales is going to score easily. Good, aggressive base running by Coy Hill to go first to third. There you go. The pitcher gets a hit. You know, it's it's pretty well stroked also. I heard Bob, what did he say, like a dunker? Well, it was technically, I guess, a dunker. But you know what? It wasn't like a blooper or a Texas leaguer. He took a nice cut, lined it right out to the same pitch he had struck out on the first time. Lincecum tried to sneak it by him. Watching the Dodger game late the other night. And that game, I believe, was tied around the fifth inning. Eric Stultz, their fifth rotation starter, 
He's filled in for uh, Kuroda, who's due back soon. Uh, they also substituted out McDonald out of their rotation, I noticed. But Stultz got a man on third, one out. It's like a tie ball game. And he hits a uh, fly ball to left field. Sacrifice fly runner comes in, and he gets in the dugout, and his teammates high-fiving him. It was exciting. Yeah, not like, you know, winning the World Series exciting. Not like, you know, a grand slam by Manny Ramirez exciting. But you know what? The fans were digging it. See, it's the unexpected. Sometimes in sports, maybe the unexpected's fun. Sure, the pitcher's probably going to make an out 9 out of 10 times. But even the worst pitcher probably bats about 100, right? 100, 140, something like that. You know, there's an old rule of thumb. Take, the, take a pitcher's batting average, add 100 to it, and you sort of get a feel for how he does as a hitter. In other words, if a pitcher's hitting 120, how would 220 be for a regular position? But not so hot. But if a pitcher's hitting like 180, that'd be like 280. That's okay. If a pitcher hits 200, you know what that is? That's 300. And look at like Zambrano. Pull up later. What, what does Zambrano end up with last year there, Brendan? Pull it up. I think he hit 300 last year. That'd be 400. Oh, my God. Chad from Effingham. Hello, Chad. Hey, Murph. How you doing? Uh, hey. You got a little uh, Jack Brick. You don't remember Brick House. But, hey, hey. What do you got from Effingham? Hey, it's, there's no way it's uh, it's too late for the Cubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last thing I want to see is them playing their best baseball in April and May. Just I don't want to see mm-hmm. that again. You know, they got plenty of time, and, mm-hmm. and look, St. Louis isn't going to have a team batting average of 320. Oh, wait a minute. I get now. Now, Chad, and, and you've called me before. I love hearing from you. See, you're down in Effingham. You're, let me guess. You're surrounded by Cardinal fans at work, at home, in the neighborhood, at your kid's school, and when you grew up, you hate those stinking Redbird fans, don't you? I'll tell you, it's tough, Murph. <laughs> <laughs> what do you hate most about the Cardinals fans? Well, the way they you know, dress, the way they dress, do they still wear, like, the white belt and the white patent shoes like they did 30, 40 years? Do they all still have the uh, Whitey Herzog buzz cut? Yeah, they're still doing that up here. <laughs> down here. I tell you, it's terrible. Well, hey, you, hey, one more thing, yeah, Murph. Uh-huh. Hey, I was gonna, I was going to say, uh, yeah. uh, to those guys up in Wisconsin, you know, I drove all the way up to Wrigley one time, and you know what? No. It rained. <laughs> Did you, yeah, and you know what? So you didn't know who to be mad at, the weather gods or the, or the MLB schedule makers. I drove from Wisconsin, and I paid $9, and then Lou didn't play my favorite guys. Isn't that terrible? Hey, Chad, thanks, buddy. Go look out for those Redbird fans. Here comes another one right there. Here comes Fred Bird. All right, buddy. All right. See a Fred Bird. That's their, they used to be their mascot. You know how hot it gets there? This hour brought to us by Menards. You ever been to St. Louis in the summer? Huh. Coldest town in the winter is Buffalo. Hottest town in the summer is St. Louis. So you're down in that Mississippi River Valley, and there's no wind. There's no breeze. It just hangs there, and it's humid, and it's hot as hell. And this one guy's got to run around in that Fred Bird outfit. By the way, Murph, uh, Carlos Zambrano hit 337 last year. 437? 337. I know, but you add oh. 100 points to the pitcher. So that's oh, what we that's were right. playing a little game there. Thank you, Brandon. Go back to sleep now. No, I'm kidding. You like that? Tell me about that Gillette song we played before. What was that from again? It was uh, used in boxing, like a promo song. It, for boxing. Gillette like sponsored open. the Friday night fights yeah. on TV, and that was their song. The little parrot came out and hold up the round, go round one, round two, the little Gillette parrot. You ever see a little Gillette parrot? Let's go. I don't blame you. I don't remember me. either. Berwin Mike is on the score. Hello, Mike. Hi, Murph. Uh, good afternoon to you. It's- you remember the Gillette parrot? I do, actually. Thank I am old God. enough to wear well, I wasn't old enough to shave when that commercial was around, but I do remember Thank it. Thank God you uh, verified that. My guy Brendan here is looking at me like I'm more nuts than I normally am. The Gillette Parrot? Murph's, uh, Murph's lost it. Yeah, indeed, Murph. <laughs> uh, indeed, I love it. I told to get right to the point, it's, not okay. too, uh, no. it's it okay. is no longer too early for the Sox, and yeah. it's beyond early. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess I have to use it's too late. Yeah. I kind of don't want to say, but I'll go with that since I have to choose. All right, uh, and you are declared. You are a Sox fan. I just am. just I so am. the listeners know you're not a, you know, a Cub fan trying to. Okay, so a Sox fan uh, is saying that, you know what, Murph, this is Berwin Mike is saying, you know what, maybe it is getting a little late. Indeed it is because. Especially if you have to make decisions by the all-star break where allegedly we take on salary if we were, quote, in it, then the season's really half of what it is. And so, therefore, you know, mm-hmm. maybe even in April it can not be early anymore. 
And, and yeah. it just hurts too much when you have hitters that take half a season off like last year, what happened a lot of the time. Let's go back to the winter, the big picture. The White Sox, and it's not my money. It's Mr. Reinsdorf's money. He can do whatever he wants with it. But if a fan buys a ticket or a fan watches the games on TV, you're investing in the advertising. that go, Or if you listen to the Sox on the score here, which we hope you do, you know, you're still paying money or time, which translates into money. Were you surprised? Uh, Sox fan Mike and Berwin, that this was the year that they decided, Mr. Reinsdorf, to pull back the payroll, $10 million, which was the second biggest of the 30 teams. I would have thought, and I said in the winter, so I'm not second-guessing, Mike, this would have been the exact year with the aging veterans who you may not have much longer, uh, Die and, and uh, Canerco and Tommy. This would have been the year I would have fattened up for one year to try to win it all. I agree, Mer. I- all right. I agree. Hey, Michael, good to hear from you in uh, Berwyn. Over on 22nd Street there, the patron saint is St. Paul Federal. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Andy's on the south side of Chicago. Hello, Andy. How you doing, man? All right, Andy, you might be my last caller of the day, oh, so you thank just... God. You... Phone, cell phone died. I finally got a landline. <laughs> well, go ahead. Take years your time. years of diehard Blackhawk yeah. bleeding. Yes. And watching the game yesterday, mm. being there... Yeah. They broke up the defense in the first period, and that's what continuity fell apart. Tell me, why, who, who, what did they, they break up? Duncan Keith mm-hmm. and Seabrook. Yes. When you start breaking up guys like that that know each other, where they're at, and pass the puck, then you start going down. You know, they didn't start either, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I was there when they that's put the true. starting lineups up. It was a, a Baker, and and a, else, yeah. Baker and Walker, Walker is it? Walker, right. But it just, yeah. it just fell right down. Mm-hmm. And then it just seems like Q doesn't let them fly. Right. These guys have pure speed. They're the youngest, what, second youngest team in the league? They were youngest, and then they were second. I think they ended up first again at the end after and roster they changes. they got pure speed. If yeah. these guys will crash and go, and same thing on a power play, they should have won the game hands down. So the good no news, Andy. the point and crashing the net. So the good news is I let you go. You might agree that there is still hope for game yeah. four. I'm going three straight. Oh, play, I love it. Listen to this. They're yes. going to play Anaheim. Good. And they're going to play Pittsburgh. Blank the Ducks. In the cup. Oh, the pens. How do you like that? Hey, what I like is. That's an upset, and I got my relatives. They're all looking at me like crazy, but I've called three games. I love it. Bring the cup on, Andy and the Sosa. Hey, keep I in still touch. I have faith in them, and they're all the way. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, keep in Murph. touch. Keep in touch. Appreciate it. Sports Radio 670. It's Murph, driven to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. Don't worry about Milton Bradley. Maybe. Ah, oh, that poor guy was in Baltimore. Am I glad he moved here? I'd like to be an Orioles fan. Andy the Clown. Holding back the dough. Keep the payroll down. Murph saying thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. See you later, everybody.